Ladies and gentlemen, this is the brand new 2020 Lincoln Aviator. And in a lot of ways, it breaks the traditional Lincoln mold. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the coolest features of this brand new car. And at the end, one crazy feature that just, well, blows my mind. And let's get to it right now. Let's start with something that's really unusual. There are, of course, four exhaust pipe, quad exhaust, that's pretty normal but check this out you can put your finger in the exhaust but the exhaust doesn't come out the big hole it comes out a small hole underneath and the reason for that is because Lincoln doesn't want to get that traditional soot build up so they've rotted the exhaust out the bottom making this well just a clean and cool exhaust and that's something that shows a lot of attention to small details this has got to be the world's largest door handle but it doesn't work like a regular door handle in fact there's no keyhole but what there is, is an electric button that if you push, unlocks the door. Now the same thing happens when you're on the inside of the car, electric door button opens up the door. What happens if, while this fails, there is an emergency door release right there. But best of all, like many luxury cars, you now have soft closed doors. Yep, and then if you're wondering, well, what happens if I don't have my key fob or my battery bot dies? Well, right there is the keyhole for the traditional key. Now that is out of the box thinking. Gosh, all these clouds, I feel like I'm flying or gliding and that's kind of one of the design directions that the Lincoln team went after when they created this car as I found out by talking to the chief engineer. John Davis, I'm the uh, chief program engineer of the new Lincoln Aviator. Your baby. My baby. Right. We've talked about curating this thing we, we reference as quiet flight for yep. Lincoln. And it's really been our own journey of determining how do we build together this experience for the customer and our Lincoln clients that pulls together these four pillars we reference as human, beauty, gliding, and sanctuary. And this was really our best opportunity. You sound like a designer, not an engineer. It, well, it, you know, it's amazing. One of, the, one of my key roles I always envisioned in terms of working on this product was to be, for lack of a better term, the yes man to our design community. Yeah. And we had a really awesome collaborative relationship working on Aviator together. And it really was that. Uh, there were certain things, obviously, they wanted to accomplish and we needed to figure out how we could enable that to be done. Part of it is designing the product literally from the ground up helps. All new architecture, the flexibility of putting the wheels exactly where they need to be, uh, designing around that profile for, to get perfect pr proportions was really important. So that was very fundamental to the product. All right, I'm gonna drop three letters on you. D-S-O, as in Detroit Symphony Orchestra. And you know when you get into a Ford, you usually have that chime that's become ubiquitous in all of our brains? Well, Ford, at least in this case, Lincoln, took it to the next level and actually had the D-S-O come up with a better chime. Listen. Much more welcoming, much more Symphonic. So it's not Star Wars, but it's much better than that. Doo -doo -doom. Doo -doo -doom. Doo -doo -doom. Well, you can tell I'm not musical. At this point in the review, you may be wondering, what the heck is a Lincoln Aviator and where does it fit in the Lincoln lineup? Well, it slots in just above the Nautilus and just below the big Navigator. It competes with cars like the Audi Q7 and of course the Volvo XC90 and all of those are three row SUVs, which means that this is a three row SUV. And from the back, I gotta tell you, this is one giant LED and it's really cool looking. And you may be wondering, how do you get in the back? Well, Lincoln has thought of that. There's a little tiny Lincoln right here which shows you where the button is to open up, of course, the electric opening tailgate. Now, there are actually two levels of storage here. You know, there's a traditional one that you would see normally. You can fold these seats with a push of a button, but underneath this storage compartment is something unique. You may think that this is the bottom of the vehicle. It's not, because if you lift this up, you will also find a spare tire hiding underneath 
the underneath part of the Lincoln. And that's pretty cool. All right, I can, I can do this. There we go. Now our particular test aviator is rolling on 22s. And I really like the look of this unique design of the wheel. It's actually very sexy and very stylish, but how do you get at the lug nuts? Well, Lincoln has thought of that. In the spare tire compartment, they give you this little key. And to get at the lug nuts, you push the key in the little hole and you pull. There are two powertrains you can get in the aviator. There's of course this three liter twin turbo that's rated at about 20 MPG on the highway if you get the all wheel drive version or 21 if you get the rear wheel drive version. Now if you opt for the hybrid, and we'll talk about that one at the end of this video, that one has a lot of power and of course a lot of cost. It starts at about $52,000 and if you check all the bells and whistles and get all the cool options, you can get into the 90s. Now it's available at your Lincoln dealership as we speak right now and oddly enough, this version of the Aviator tows more 6700 versus 5600 for the more powerful hybrid. Now guys, keep in mind I'm 6'2", so if I can fit in the third row, then certainly your kids can. And to get back there, it's relatively straightforward. You push this little button on top of the seat. The seat retracts electronically and voila. Oh, you gotta move this up. And let's put it back and see how much room there is. Well, there is a scalloped roof, so it does provide a little bit of headroom, but yeah, once again, if you want the big boy three row passenger Lincoln, I'd go for the Navigator. It's pretty tight back here, but these captain's chair do allow me to kind of put my foot forward and get a little bit more comfortable. Getting in is only half the battle. Getting out is the other half. Yeah, it's not too bad. And then put the seat back. Lincoln has taken the mundane car seat to the next level with 30-way adjustment. And the thing that exemplifies that the most is, well, come on around here, let me show you this Mercedes-like control for the seat. These two buttons exemplify that, I think, the best. Of course, you've got massaging seats, but many luxury cars have that. But check this out. Individual thigh support extensions. So if you've worked, let's say, your right leg more than your left leg on your squat day, then you can adjust left to right depending on which one is more muscly that day. The thing about new technology and features is, well, they're new and sometimes they're not perfect. Let's take the seats for example. There are 30 ways to adjust them and I can't find the right way to adjust mine. At the end of the day, they're lumpy. It's kind of like sitting on, well, a bowl of lumpy mashed potatoes. I can't find a way where something is not either poking or pushing in my back in a strange way. And think about this. You've really got one, two, and three ways to interact with the car. Lots of buttons, lots of virtual controls. I'd really prefer just to have one way to interact with the car. And that's the tough thing about technology. Making it intuitive and making it user-friendly, that's the magic sauce. People are gonna wonder, What's the difference between the Aviator and the Explorer? They're ba built basically on the same chassis, same architecture. Yeah, so we call it the same architecture, okay. but even within that architecture, the front suspensions and geometries are different. Uh, we have a true uh, SLA suspension up front. They use a McPherson strut front end. Uh, the rear suspension, again, well, it sh shares an architecture design. We optimize the rear hard points in that suspension for Aviator to improve ride even more. Um, those were some of the focus points in terms of how do we develop that architecture to deliver what the client wants. You'll uniquely find our dynamic handling package on Aviator that includes the air suspension, adaptive suspension, our road preview feature. You won't find any of that on the, on the Explorer product. On the inside, uh, a sanctuary design. You won't see shared components there. All of the switches are unique. Um, obviously a very unique, elegant design with this horizontal influence. Um, so, so many things. Our head-up display, even our uh, e-latch uh, door handles and uh, soft closing doors, all of those things are unique. We really were trying to curate this quiet flight experience. The Explore customers, we serve a very different clientele. Uh, Aviator is seeking, if you think about it in terms of the, what the customers want for a three-row SUV and also you know, relatively high household income, 
those customers look a lot like Navigator customers, but maybe they don't want that size of vehicle. They want something that's a little more nimble, a little more garageable, uh, and that's why it's, this is a great solution in that luxury space. I saw this for the first time in a Range Rover a couple of years ago, but for instance, when you hit this cruise control button, all of a sudden these lights beneath the main T of the steering wheel light up to give you complete control of cruise control. So when you don't want to cruise control, you don't see it, doesn't distract, but when you do want cruise control, you do see it. This is probably my favorite part of the steering wheel. It's this button right here. Normally, if you want to use voice command, there's a button somewhere here in the central IP, but Lincoln has thoughtfully moved it up here next to where your thumb would normally rest. So if I want to navigate to say, well, let's try it. Navigate to the nearest airport. Please say a line number or say none of those. Well, there you go. I've got a whole choice of airports I can go to and you know, it worked pretty well. Yeah, and speaking of these captain's chairs, let's see how much room I have in the second row. Yeah, it's not bad. It's actually pretty good. And this is with the seat all the way back, headroom, knee room. This seat is all the way back. And of course, because, well, modern convenience dictates it, we now have four zone climate control. So I can have my own air conditioned or heated space in this seat, but the people in the back, they're gonna have to live with whatever I choose. Car today, you get low on fuel and it gives you a warning. Hey, your fuel is low. Why don't instead we do something that's positive with that information? We can one, let you know that you're getting low on fuel, but why don't we also ask you, would you like to find the nearest fuel station? Why don't I just give you a prompt within the instrument cluster that says, find the nearest fuel station and a couple of clicks will set that navigation waypoint in there and it'll take you there as opposed to doing that all independent. So part of our process was make those interactions very human, try to make them effortless. You probably had this problem at the end of the day, after a long work day, your phone is dead because this has become a work tool. Well, Lincoln has thoughtfully incorporated a charger for the phone. And oftentimes that charger is somewhere over here and it takes a valuable cup holder space, but Lincoln has placed it let me show you right here in a little pocket that lives inside the glove box. Look at that. Of course, what luxury car would be complete without the luxury audio experience? And what makes the Aviator unique in some ways is this right there. That's a speaker. But, you know, one speaker above your head, you can get that in a Wrangler. But Lincoln takes it once again to the next level. There are eight speakers mounted in the ceiling for a total of about 30 in the car, giving you that incredible and luxurious audio experience that uh, we can't show you because of copyright reasons. Wah, wah. Each and every aviator comes with a bunch of different drive modes and you'd think they'd be something like, well, let's say snow, mud, comfort, normal. Nope, Lincoln has taken it to the next level. So of course, the basic one is still normal, but after that, it gets a little kooky. And what I mean by that is, let me show you. So you start at normal, which of course is normal ride height, normal throttle response, and then you can go over to the next one, which is slippery. That's still pretty normal, obviously snow, but check this one out, deep conditions. So that's when you're off-road or with mud and snow. And if you really want to get funky, you can go the other way. You can go to conserve. That means more efficient driving. And this is my favorite, Excite. Yep, look at those two burnouts in the Excite mode which, uh, yeah, are exciting. Of course, push button transmissions have become a thing and Lincoln has taken it once again to the next level with this almost piano black key-like selector for your gears. You have your park, you have your reverse, neutral and drive, and all these buttons basically do is put the car into drive or reverse. But the cool part is not what the buttons do, but what's underneath the buttons, and that is a 10-speed, that's right, 10-speed, automatic transmission that is paired to a twin turbo v6 that puts out 400 horsepower and just over 400 pound foot of torque in this non-hybrid model now check out this light switch of course most light switches for some reason have become rotary knobs not lincoln it has a dial that allows you to select whether you want the headlights on headlights in auto running lights on or just the lights off by flicking the dial up and down it's not groundbreaking, but certainly is unique and different. I promised you the coolest feature and it's right here. There's a plug-in hybrid version of the Aviator. Okay, that's not that cool, but what is cool is that this car, get this, puts out just under 500 horsepower 
and a raptor smashing 630 pound foot of torque. All right, but as an engineer, you gotta love that you have a vehicle in the Grand Tour, which is a plug-in hybrid, right? That gets 500 horsepower, and this number's crazy. Almost. <laughs> almost, yeah, almost. 630 pound foot of torque. Right. Why so much? I mean, that's, that's so, like, that is a lot. So everybody else is thinking about this as a fuel economy yeah, based vehicle. Our view was in this segment, and we talked about it this morning, our clients aren't so concerned about fuel economy. Oh, they want good, respectable fuel economy, but it's not top in their purchase decisions. One of the things we wanted to focus on was they do like power and performance. How do we provide this as what we call a step-up performer from our base model, which is already great, right, with 400 horsepower. And so that's why we intentionally used a different engine architecture from the standpoint of what our competitors do that might be a smaller displacement I-4. No, we're going to give you a big, potent, three-liter twin turbocharged V6, and then we're going to match it to the electrified portions of the powertrain so we can combine them. Because people, I think, are more interested in that as a relevant solution for, a, a, call it a smarter performance vehicle. And that's what we wanted to do. Now, we're going to do another video just on this car, so you'll have to come back to TFL Car for more news, views, and, of course, aviator plug-in hybrid reviews. See you guys next time. It's beautiful here in Napa, but just a little hot. Ciao.